So let's let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. All right, this is Jody Meyer, chair of the Historic Resources Commission. And I apologize in advance. I have two puppies I'm fostering from the Humane Society that I thought what I could put in the kennel and they would not go crazy. So my son is about to take them outside. Uh, I will go ahead and call to order the uh, August 26, 2021 meeting of the Historic Resources Commission. And I think I will just go ahead and take roll call of commissioners for the evening. Uh, Commissioner Irby. Present. Commissioner Holder. Here. Commissioner Ezell, I don't believe is here. Uh, Commissioner Young, I also don't believe is present. Commissioner Foster. Yes. And I think I see Commissioner Hawley here. He's connecting to audio. There he is. Commissioner Holly, I'm taking roll call. I just called your name, so you're present. Present with technical difficulties now solved. Okay. All right, perfect. Um, we will go ahead then and uh, start with the first agenda item tonight, communications. Um, oh, and I want just want to note it that Commissioner Young just joined in. Commissioner <laughs> Meyer, this uh, is Avery uh, Turner Planning Staff. Um, I'll still need to give my speech on the procedures this evening um, for Zoom procedures. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, so good evening and welcome to the August 26, 2021 Historic Resources Commission meeting. My name is Avery Kerner and I will be facilitating the Zoom video portion of the meeting tonight. I will work alongside the chair who is on remote video to facilitate the meeting proceedings. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live on the city's YouTube channel and public access ch cable channel 25. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found on the lower left-hand corner of the Zoom menu next to the video icon. This will make it easier for everyone to hear the meeting. Just remember to unmute if and when you want to speak. You can also turn your video camera on or off by clicking the video icon in the menu. For the purposes of this meeting, when you are not participating or when you are participating in the meeting, please keep your video on. When you're not participating in the meeting, it is okay to turn your video off. Turning your video off when you are not participating will help make sure that the active meeting participants can be seen on the screen. If you are participating by phone, you can enter star six to mute and unmute your phone. Somewhere on your Zoom screen, you will also see a choice to toggle between speaker and gallery view. Speaker view shows the active speaker. Gallery view tiles all of the meeting participants. Commissioners, you must state your name and title each time you speak. Members of city staff must also state their name and title each time they speak. I would ask that the applicants and members of the public identify themselves each time before they speak to ensure that everyone is able to follow along. When public comment is sought on an item, individuals participating via Zoom should use the raise your hand feature. Windows and Mac users can access this feature through the participants button on the bottom of their screen. Android and iPhone users can access this feature through the more button located on the bottom right corner of their screen. For those calling in by phone, you may dial star nine. Individuals be called upon by name in the order they appear on the me meeting host screen. When you are called on, please unmute your listening device and state your name before speaking. The chair will then call for in-person public comment for those who are physically present. Staff will direct you to the podium to speak. All motions will need to be stated clearly. After a motion is made and seconded, the chair will call on each commissioner individually to provide their vote. The chair will then announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. I want to again remind everyone to please mute yourself when you're not speaking, and I'll turn the meeting over to the chair. Uh, this is Chair Jody Meyer. We'll go ahead and start with the first agenda item tonight, which is communications. Uh, do we have any communications from other commissions, the State Historic Preservation Officer and or the general public? Um, this is Avery Kerner planning staff. There are no communications that I am aware of. 
This is Chair Meyer again, thank you. Um, are there, is there any disclosure of ex parte communications by any commissioners this evening? Okay, I hear none. Are there any declaration of abstentions for specific agenda items by commissioners this evening? Okay, I don't see any. <clears throat> and do we have any committee reports this evening? This is Avery Kerner planning staff. There are no committee reports that I'm aware of. Thank you, Avery. This is Chair Meyer again. Um, we will then move on to um, our consent agenda this evening, the administrative approvals. There were a number of design review applications <clears throat> that have been administratively reviewed and approved by staff. Um, is there any public comment on this item, Avery? This is Avery Kerner planning staff. There is no one in the commission chambers and I don't see any hands raised on Zoom. Thank you, this is Chair Meyer again. Uh, we'll bring that back to the commission for any discussion or I'll entertain a motion to confirm those design review applications. This is Commissioner Foster. I will move to confirm the attached design review applications according to the standards and information listed in the staff reports for each application. Okay, this is Chair Meyer. Uh, is there a second? This is Commissioner Holder. I second. Okay, there has been a motion and a second. So I'll go ahead and take a roll call vote. Commissioner Irby. Aye. Commissioner Holder. Aye. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Foster. Yes. And Commissioner Holly. Aye. And Commissioner Meyer is an aye. So the motion carries uh, six to zero this evening. <clears throat> All right, then we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is general public comment. Avery, is there any general public comment this evening? This is Avery Kerner planning staff. There is nobody in the commission chambers or raising their hand on Zoom to provide general public comment. Thank you. This is Chair Meyer again. Um, we will then move on to our public hearing items. Uh, there is one public hearing item tonight, DR 21-240, which is 818 Massachusetts Street, a storefront alteration. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. This is a storefront alteration for, sorry, <laughs> um, that on the slide has the wrong address, so we'll just move forward. Um, this is actually for Picklemons that's outlined um, below on your screen. This is the right one. Let me see. Hold on. No, have you already done Picklemans? No, nope. sorry, we started at the wrong time. <laughs> okay, sorry, technical difficulties. I was running late and Avery's got this going on. So it's 818 Massachusetts Street. Um, it is a state law review. It's for a storefront alteration and it's also downtown design guidelines review. This is the project location circled in red. And this is the existing storefront and a close up of that storefront. The applicant is requesting to put in a pickup window. If you look on that storefront, the recessed portion on the right hand side of the door is where the window will be placed. Um, this is an elevation drawing showing the pickup, the location of the pickup window. If you'll notice, it has glazing above and below the window. It's a little different than the one we saw previously. Um, staff is recommending approval. Is there one more? Yeah, this shows the interior on the right-hand side. You can see what the, look, the location of the window on the interior. Staff is recommending approval of this project. Um, it's a little different than the one you saw before because it is on a recessed portion of the storefront and it is glazing above and below the window. 
So staff recommends approval for the state law review, as well as for the downtown design guidelines review. And I'd be happy to stand for any questions you might have. This is Chair Meyer again. I believe the applicant is present. Does the applicant wish to have any comment? Um, not at this time, other than thank you guys for um, showing up tonight and having a, a special committee uh, just to review this. I do appreciate that very much. Um, it does uh, appear by the, um, the layout that it, that is accurate, and um, we are just wanting the pickup window to um, continue to help na navigate through the uh, pandemic and to help retain staff. So. Thank you very much. This is Chair Meyer again. Thank you, Janelle. Um, is there any uh, public comment on this item? This is Avery Kerner, planning staff. There is nobody present in the commission chambers or raising their hand on Zoom. This is Chair Meyer again, and we'll bring it back to the commission for discussion, or I'll entertain a motion. As Commissioner Irby, I have no objections to this I'm in support. This is Commissioner sure. Holly. I echo Commissioner Irby. Well, this is Commissioner Foster, me as well. So this I will. Oh, go ahead. I'll roll right into doing a. Uh, this is Commissioner Foster. I'll, I'll take a stab at the uh, motion. Um, I will move that we approve the project and make the determination that the project does not damage or destroy any historic property included in the National Register of Historic Places or the State this Register of Historic Places. Okay, there's a, a motion and this, is there a second? Commissioner Irby, I second. Okay. Um, this is Chair Meyer again. There has been a motion and a second, so I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Irby? Aye. Commissioner Holder? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Hawley? Aye. And Commissioner Meyer is also an aye. So that motion carries six to zero. I think we also need to make a motion regarding the downtown design guidelines. This is Commissioner Holder. I can make that motion and save uh, Commissioner Foster from that. Um, so this is Commissioner Holder. I move that we find the, that the proposed project meets the development and design standards of the downtown design guidelines for the downtown urban conservation overlay district. Mr. Chair Meyer, is there a second? This is Commissioner Holly. Okay, this is Chair Meyer again. Um, there has been a motion and a second. I'll go ahead and take a roll call vote again. Commissioner Irby. Commi uh, Commissioner Irby, aye. Commissioner Holder. Aye. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Holly. Aye. And Commissioner Myers and aye. So that motion carries six to zero. So good luck on your project. Okay, we we will move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is actually a miscellaneous item, DR 20-260, 812 to 18, I'm sorry, 812 to 814 Massachusetts Street. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, this is actually a project that you reviewed a couple of months ago and looked at. It's for a patio addition um, behind 812 Massachusetts Street, um, shown here in the blue square on the map. This has already been constructed and at your meeting you looked at this and approve the um, enclosure with 
the condition that the metal siding be painted. Um, there was some information provided from the applicant that was not included in the packet. And he requested to come back before you and look at additional information. Um, he does not want to paint the metal siding and is asking for your reconsideration of having to paint the siding. And I'd be happy to stand for any questions you may have. This is Commissioner Foster. I thought the only recourse is to appeal to City Council, City Commission. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. You actually approved the project. And so you would need to, um, if you want to allow that, and you can deny the project or you can um, approve it with it being um, not painted. It was because you approved the project that there was no appeal to the city commission. Commissioner Irby, uh, so I recall that we already looked at these additional resource, these additional things that he included, um, and he wasn't present at that time for us to discuss it. Is the applicant present now, or has additional, has more information been shared since the previous meeting? I, I couldn't tell that there was additional information included. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. No, the additional information was provided to you before the last meeting and the applicant was not at that meeting and it does not look like he is here this evening. We're going through the waiting room to make sure. This so is Commissioner Buchanan. I also don't, I thought we, since he wasn't there, we voted to like wait until he was there. Either way, he's not here tonight. Is it still fair to have this discussion without him present? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. No, I think you would want the applicant here to be able to answer any questions that you might have. Commissioner, Commissioner Irby, uh, one more question. Is the mural still on the table? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, he did say that he was checking into a mural that that might be a possibility if he has to paint the metal siding. This is Commissioner. Oh, I, I was just gonna say, I don't think there's any requirement that an applicant has to be present. Obviously, if they choose not to be, then, I mean, we'll proceed it in whatever manner we, we determine, so. Um, Commissioner Irby, I think that it was, the, in, it was the suggestion of a mural that made us think that we needed to really engage with the uh, applicant in order to have that discussion. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. I think the commission could go ahead and discuss the project and, um, if you choose to take a new vote on it to deny the project um, with it being painted, or if you want to give direction to the applicant that it still that it needs to be painted or have a mural, which would be painting it. This is Chair Meyer. We could also defer it and request that the applicant appear at the next meeting, I guess. This is Commissioner Holder. Lynn, has the applicant given any indication that he or she will be present? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. When we sent out the call for the meeting, they did respond that he would be here. And Commissioner Irby, I also want to point out he was here at the original meeting when we didn't have a quorum. This is Commissioner Foster. I missed the last meeting, so I guess I missed the discussion about the mural, but um, I haven't seen any information that would change my original vote. This is Commissioner was, Irby. I, I still think that the applicant needs to be present for this conversation. So, I mean, I regret that we didn't have a quorum when he was present, but I'm in favor of deferring again. This is Commissioner Buchanan. I, I'm also in favor of deferring because I think the applicant deserves to be present during these conversations, but that's not going to change my decision. Um, that I, I'm I, based on what's been provided thus far, I'm not in favor of approving it. 
Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Could I suggest that we take a five minute break and let me try to get in touch with the applicant? This is Chair Meyer, uh, that would be fine with me. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Commission. I'm sorry, Administrator Chair Meyer, you would need to call a recess. This is Chair Meyer. Uh, I will then do that. I will call a recess for five minutes. So let me know when they do, what, uh, where we're at. Sorry, I, I was confused on the date. That's okay. Um, I had just presented that um, you had some additional information that you wanted the commission to review, and they were wanting to ask you questions about that information and about painting the metal material. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, the information we kind of did. Um, Lynn, like, uh, 
sorry, this is Chair Meyer again. I don't think sure. we officially restarted the meeting. It looks like all commissioners are back and present. So we'll go ahead and and start the meeting again. Okay. Which do, do, I, I guess what we'll do is, uh, Dalton, if you want to give some information about your additional information. Oh sure, yeah. No, we we would we had just gone and looked at um, just the use of galvanized metal in downtown Lawrence um, and in Lawrence, like historically. And so we went and visited with the folks at the Watkins Museum, and um, they, you know, kind of found some documentation which i think is all in that packet that that lynn put together um to kind of show what historically had been done with galvanized metal in lawrence even to the even to the effect that sometimes people would paint silver over metal to make it look like it was galvanized um so we were just i mean um initially we had sort of just looked at some of the buildings in downtown lawrence and this was like the best solution for basically keeping bugs and and insects and water out of the space um and then you know this is sort of just some examples where we had found the galvanized metal used um and metal facade used on the backs of buildings in downtown um then then we went kind of a little bit further and then kind of looked at the historic implications of that which um the watkins museum was like kind enough to help us um you know, with some information about where that had been used in the past. You know, so again, our, our intent was to be consistent with what was in downtown Lawrence. Um, I know that it's a, you know, I don't I don't know if that how you would describe that material. You know, we were trying to reuse material that we thought would be reflective of other things we'd seen downtown. And for us, it was also just like a big, a, 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 a real clear way to be able to keep, you know, like to, to close up the space as much as possible because of the use of the space, you know, we, there's a risk for limestone with health code violations based on like infiltration of insects and um, rodents and, uh, you know, kind of other critters that could get in there. So that was really our intent was to make that as sealed as possible so we could actually like prepare food in the back there. And if, and if you've been back in the space now, there's a pizza oven and a, and a whole line for cooking um, in the back of the space. So that material was like kind of instrumental in helping us um, maintain that space to be safe and secure from the outside world. This is Chair Meyer. Uh, Lynn, was there any public comment on this item? This is Avery Kerner, planning staff. There is nobody present in the commission chambers or raising their hand on Zoom to provide comment. Mr. Chair Meyer again, thank you. Um, I guess we'll bring it back to the commission for discussion now. This is uh, Commissioner Buchanan. I've got a question for Lynn. Um, at, what determines the difference between an addition versus this enclosed back portion of a lot, you know, what is the, the actual definition of an addition versus what this is, which is supposed to be temporary? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. This was actually originally just um, a wood fence um, to fence off a patio and then some screening was added above it. Um, when all the changes started happening to the design of this, the um, building codes department, uh, plans reviewers changed this from an outdoor space to an addition. And so as, as an addition, it needed to be reviewed for um, state law review and downtown design guidelines review. Um, the main difference being the metal siding rather than just a wood fence. So it's enclosed now instead of just being an open area. This is Commissioner McCann. Thanks for clarifying. I thought we were still looking at this as a temporary enclosure, not as an actual addition. I guess I don't remember when that changed. Thanks.
This is Commissioner Holder. Um, I don't think we actually ever got to review this when it was just a enclosure. If I remember correctly, this was um, construction proceeded without us getting to comment on the design as per the requirements for local code. Um, and then by the time we got it, it was already constructed and with the corrugated metal. Um, yes, it's galvanized, but it's corrugated. Um, my interpretation of the standards remains the same, is that this wholesale metal panel is not appropriate for the use in this downtown area. It does not follow the Secretary of Interior standards. And to keep it as such, we were trying to meet the applicant partway um, to allow the material to be kept, but it needed to be painted. And um, I do appreciate the applicant trying to find more information um, to give us reason to consider leaving this as a bare metal. Um, but the historic examples that was were provided, um, historically galvanized metal was always painted. Um, it was not left bare. And the I would go on to say the examples of um, pressed metal, sheet metal goods that were painted to imitate uh, galvanized metal was done in the more recent past. And because it was a paint application, it was likely not something that was reviewed. Um, I just, again, if we were conversing about potentially painting it just a, a consistent color or a mural, that would be one conversation. But I'm of the opinion it cannot be left as bare metal and meet the standards that we're supposed to be reviewing under. This is Commissioner Foster, I concur. Yeah, I guess our, uh, this is Dalton Paley. Uh, I guess our understanding was that it was reviewed internally as it related to limestone, which is a, a contributing building and 812, which I'm, I'm just trying to remember. Lynn, can you tell me if 812 was a contributing building? I don't. I don't think so. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. 812 is non-contributing, 814 is contributing. Um, right, and we and we and we combined them just to to add to, to make this space so you know limestone could uh, have outdoor seating. And so, you know, our our intent isn't again like to go against like what it feels like there's this like uh like this conflict, like as if we intended to go against like the guidelines of the city, which is or guidelines of the HRC, which is kind of hard for us to understand because we thought, again, we thought we were doing the right thing. Um, and, and again, I think my mistake was uh, not understanding that it had been approved and that this material change would be such a dramatic um, thing going against what HRC is intended for. Um, we, we just viewed similar buildings that were in back alleys not changing the facade of downtown Lawrence, other than like in the back alley, which is mostly used for service entrances and service to the businesses that are back there. Um, you know, again, like if, if we have to paint it, we will. I mean, if for us, we just think it's more consistent. We're afraid the paint's gonna peel off. And, you know, it most of it is on a building that doesn't contribute historically to downtown Lawrence. Um, so again, we thought we had been it, the, the review was an internal review, which is my understanding when we first proposed the project, we had to kind of change some of the circulation of the space based on limestone's needs and be able to secure the space for limestone. So we had to actually make some changes through that process. I mean, our, our process through COVID was kind of rushed with the intent of allowing limestone to be open, um, which has turned out to be a very complicated uh, process because we were, you know, kind of, we, we had a lot of roadblocks trying to put this thing together. Um, and this is, um, you know, again, it, our, our intent was to help the business and give them more space to be like safe for COVID. You know, that was the intent. Uh, we thought our customer would respond best to the space they were building. And this was just like a, not, not an afterthought necessarily. It was just a way to seal the space up that we thought was consistent with things that we saw downtown. You know, and I understand your guys is, uh, you know, feeling like we, tried to work around it, but that was certainly not our intent. We were communicating with Lynn throughout the process. Um, and we just thought what we're, what we're doing was a, a thing that was reviewed internally and not through the HRC. Uh, 
this is Commissioner Foster. From my perspective, if you were coming in fresh and proposing this, I would decline to approve it. Uh, which, 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 uh, uh, Dalton Paley again, which I, 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 I think I understand. Um, but again, like our intent is to be consistent with downtown. I think we're nominated for a building we're doing across the street at the same time for a preservation award. You know, so our standard is pretty high for trying to keep downtown Lawrence as it is with historic buildings. So, uh, again, we thought we were trying, we thought we were doing the right thing. We thought we were consistent with what's going on in the, in the alleyways. And, um, you know, that was really our intent, you know. We even went to the, as far as like we had a fire sprinkled split space, which is built of mostly like metal and and concrete, you know. So it was it's a it's a pretty. I don't know if you guys have been back there, but it's a pretty nice space, and that was the intent was to be consistent with that. This is Chad. Commissioner Cannon. Um, I agree a lot with with Chad. I think the the percentage of the metal that it being on the first floor, like it just. I, I, I very much appreciate you wanting to be for the business and trying to do what's right for the business. I think what probably got misconstrued is you started with a temporary and now it's permanent. Well, but it was, wait, 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 hold on. It was never, it was never temporary. Like we, we, we poured 30,000, $40,000 worth of concrete. We put up a metal structure to put it up there. We set posts in underground. This was, there's nothing on the, the design, the plan that makes it anything that looks like it's not permanent. I mean, it is a permanent structure. There's a there's a, well, a one foot step. You can't even drive a car into there. It is built with the intent for it to be a permanent structure. It expands the capacity of the restaurant. This permanent. is too much of a cannon. Regardless of temporary permanence, I think if it was any other material other than metal, I would feel better about having a discussion. The amount of metal, type of metal, it just, doesn't sit right with me. And I, if you look at the percentages of how much facade space it takes up, historically, it's minimal. It's crownings, it's, it just doesn't fit. And I can't support it. Sorry, this is Chair Meyer. Um, and Dalton, I just want to say that from my perspective, you guys always do a very good job, I think, of, of you know, trying to trying to do your best according to his historic guidelines and whatnot. So I don't, I guess I personally don't want to give you the impression that we don't think you take it seriously or anything like that, because I think that you do. Um, so I, I just want to put that out there. Sometimes we just have disagreements uh, as a body about if it conforms or doesn't conform, but I just want to make it clear that I, I don't think that there was anything inappropriate or about, about what has gone on here. It's just now we're at a point where we have to approve or disapprove um, the change from the prior approval. Does yeah. that make sense? That, that, that makes sense to me. Again, I understand. And I guess, I guess I'm, I'm confused about the, like, the effect of it being like a contributing building versus a non-contributing building, like, you know, just because most of that facade is on a building that doesn't contribute. So I don't, I don't know how that weighs into the conversation. Again, I don't think we've ever had to go before HRC. We, most of the stuff we, you know, was approved that we had, they just didn't require it. We went through Lynn and went to the state. Um, so this is, you know, again, it's, it's new to me. So I don't, I don't know how those things weigh. I mean, I guess I, I understand like, there's a question of massing at the level that we're at and the effect that it has on the facade. Um, you know, part of our concern is also, we're just not sure, like even getting paint to stick to that metal is going to be hard. Well, I mean, we'll figure it out, but um, you know, we're just worried about like the long, the longevity of it. And if we have to paint it, well, again, we will like, that's, we just, we just, we thought we were doing the right thing. So that's kind of where I land. And this is commissioner holder. Um, I would say I've, I've heard the applicant reference contributing versus non-contributing. I think it's important to remember that these two structures are both within the boundaries of a National Register Historic District, as well as a uh, state uh, district that's listed on the State Register of Historic Places. So whether it's attached to a non-contributing building or a contributing, it would still get reviewed. Okay, okay. Uh, the, then, and, uh, the reason also that, um, I'm not sure what happened before we got the packet for review, um, but when the design changed, it 
kind of got upgraded to the level of review that was necessary. I think it was beyond what a staff member could approve, uh, which you've, you've done in the past. Um, so we want to have a conversation now, um, but again, the bare metal, this corrugated metal was traditionally used as a roofing material in an industrial setting. It's just not appropriate for a historic district use. And this is Commissioner Foster. Sarah, thank you very much for that. In addition to the historic district, there are it's within the boundaries of the downtown design guidelines. And that's uh, an important part of this conversation as well. Regardless whether it's on the front or the back or the first floor or the second floor or the third floor, it all still applies. And how, how is that, um, I guess, how is that like, you know, we looked at the back of the, at Sarah's fabrics was like one of the pl places that was referenced in those photos, which is galvanized metal on the second floor on a metal walkway. Uh, and so I guess I'm just trying to understand like the, what the difference is between these two things. Is it just like, because it's a, 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 a corrugated metal, is that what changes the conversation? This is Commissioner Foster and that's a big part of it. I happened to be on the commission back when that was approved. Um, apples and oranges as far as I'm concerned. So it's just, it's because it's, because we reused a material then. It has yeah. nothing to do with reuse of material. This is Commissioner Foster. This is feeling fairly argumentative and I'll look to Jody to try to move the conversation along. Uh, this is Commissioner Irby. I actually, I don't think this, I would actually like, I think we should explain it to him. So like, what is different? Like what it, it's, I think it's the corrugated metal. It's also like the amount of it, right? It's the size and massing of it. It's, that the fact that it's not on an upper level, it's on a lower level. But I'm not an arch, I'm not an architect or a historic preservationist, so I think it would be really helpful if we could articulate what is different. This is Commissioner Holder. I would say all of those things, Kelly, that you brought up. It's the massing, it's the positioning on the elevation, it's the material itself, and the fact that it's corrugated. We are absolutely. A preservationists and historic preservation architects and everyone who loves historic architecture, by nature, we want reuse of material. We want reuse of historic material. We want things to not put, be put in the waste stream. So thank you for reusing material. The question here is not about material reuse, it's about the appropriateness of bright, um, bare, corrugated metal at eye level, even though it's on a secondary elevation. And it also is concealing and obstructing the view of the backside of another building that probably had more appropriate materials. It definitely did not have corrugated metal. Uh, the view shed, I was not on the commission during the Sarah fabric review, but I would say just looking at that, it's a small section and it's not obscuring the back of a building. I'm sure that was part of a discussion. It's also elevated, so it's not at street view. Um, when pedestrians are walking behind that building. And it, it, is, it has a smaller percentage, component percentage of that entire facade uh, comparatively to the addition that we're discussing on your particular property. Okay. So that's yeah. just some of the things that I would have probably talked, spoken to if I was on the commission during that time. But those are some of the things that we look at. Yeah, yeah well, I, I mean, just, just to be clear, it, it obscures, I think, a little bit of limestone, maybe six feet if, if we're getting down to apples and oranges and then most of what it obscures is the back of 812 mass which is like a plastic like siding that's on the back of 812 which is bright yellow um so ju just just i just you know because we we considered that when we did the first uh going through everything with lynn to begin with so we could look at that um, so I guess, I guess I, at this point, I guess I just need to, you know, I, it sounds like the solution is that we need to paint it, but I, I'm not hearing anything else other than that. This is Chair Meyer. Um, I think what, unless there, unless the commissioners have any more questions or discussion, I think probably it would just be appropriate to see if we have a motion one way or the other. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Since this is a miscellaneous item and you have approved this item with the um, metal siding being painted, 
Uh, you would just want to confirm that approval or you could deny with the exposed metal panel and allow the applicant the ability to um, appeal to the city commission. Commissioner Irby, Lynn, do we need to talk about a mural or no? Is a, I mean, do we need to say that we would, if we, if, if the commission discusses it and is okay with a mural instead of painting something solid, do we need to, to, to say that and distinguish between that and just painting? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Yes, you would want to have that discussion, um, particularly with the applicant. Yeah, uh, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, this is Chair Meyer. Uh, Dalton, I was just gonna ask you, is a mural something that you're wanting to do? This looks like uh, this difficult, a uh, difficult uh, to paint a mural on this, but then I'm no muralist, so. Uh, we painted a giant mural on uh, rough plaster in the back. So I don't, this, this is just, to me, it's more of a challenge. You know, part of our goal for like, um, working on these spaces in the alley of a 12 is to activate those spaces more um you know they're kind of dirty nasty alleys and now i think there's a lot more foot traffic um you know because of sunflowers new um you know sort of draw to there um alchemy has a really nice back entrance global cafe is is working on putting outdoor dining in the back of their space um love garden has talked to us about like um you know and everything from creative ways to do like performances on the back of their stoop there to just, you know, to me, making it more attractive to the people who go to the farmer's market. So a mural is something that we had considered. We weren't sure if that was an option um, as far as just like trying to make the alley more, um, you know, attractive to people back there. Uh, part of our push too is to clean up the dumpsters that are behind there. There's kind of like a nasty group of dumpsters behind the C to Lindo, and then the dumpsters that are right behind Alchemy. Um, we're hoping that at some point the city will enclose those. And I know the dumpsters that are behind C to Lindo, I don't think are even like we were told recently that they're not even supposed to be there. Um, so, you know, part of it for us is just cleaning up that alley more, um, encouraging, you know, all the businesses that back there to, you know, keep trash out of the alley. It's, it's going to be a circulation for deliveries, you know, in, in perpetuity, I would imagine. Um, but you know, we would like to see it to be a more comfortably traffic space to, for it to be physically safer for people. I mean, anytime you go, you know, I'm in that alley a lot. So anytime you're back in that alley, there's a lot of foot traffic or seemingly more foot traffic than there used to be, maybe just because people are outside more during COVID. Uh, I'm not sure, but it would be nicer if it were cleaner back there. It's also, I think, a net benefit to, you know, the businesses that, um, you know, for their basically just for their customers to feel safer. Um, in those alleys, um, the, the cleaner they are, I think people just consistently will, use, again, will use them more, foot traffic more. It makes, it makes using the parking in the back of the 800 block on New Hampshire and in that lot easier if, if people can, you know, access through the back of the buildings or through the breezeways there in a clean alley. Mr. Chair Meyer, thank you. Um, sorry, I got distracted by that. I, is there, I guess, how does the commission want to handle it? This is Commissioner Irby. I would certainly, I would be in favor of, I would be more in favor of a mural than I would be of, a, of approving the bare corrugated metal. This is Commissioner Holly. Lynn, could you please clarify, I didn't follow 100%, um, the paths available to the applicant or to this board that would allow the applicant to appeal to the city commission if the board does not approve? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, you can keep the approval the way you have it with the um, material being painted or you can reconsider your approval and deny the application with unpainted material. And that would allow the applicant to appeal that determination to the city commission. And, and, and is, is that, sorry, Lynn, can I ask one question? Is that, is that the same if we were requesting to do a mural back there? Or is that a different conversation? We, we had talked to um, 
um, why am I spacing his name, Porter O'Neill about it a, a long time ago, um, just to see what was available. And I've talked to a couple of different people who, you know, paint murals professionally and um, uh, get grants to do murals, you know, cause there's a, a, there's a handful of murals that are already in that back alley. And there's a consistent problem with um, graffiti. Um, so it's interesting cause like for whatever reason, every building from, you know, the pig all almost all the way to sunflower has graffiti on the back of it, but that metal has been left untouched since we put it up, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, but I also think that by putting art up in the alleys, it kind of in a way discourages people from graffitiing over them. Um, it seems to be like, uh, you know, if you look at the back of the alchemy, uh, garage door, um, which is like a plastic flat facade, it gets graffiti pretty consistently. Um, Love Garden has had, had issues with graffiti back there for years. And, um, you know, we're just, we just think that a mural would encourage the, you know, people not to do it. You know, again, uh, yeah. Sorry, Delton, I didn't mean to interrupt oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just rambling. Okay. Uh, uh, this is Chair Meyer again. Lynn, I, I guess I had a question. I mean, when it was approved to be painted, is there anything that within the approval that it's painted that that couldn't be painted as a mural? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Uh, no, the way it was approved was just that it be painted. I think if okay. um, it was a mural, that would still be a painted surface unless the commission wants to direct otherwise. I This is Chair Meyer again. I just wanted to make sure that if, if the applicant chose to, you know, paint it gray as opposed to painting a mural, it's all one and the same, wouldn't require a separate process. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. To paint a mural would require a process to go through the Cultural Arts Commission for approval of a mural downtown. This is Chris Ruby Cannon. Um, I understand having the Cultural Arts Commission, I, I expected that, but how does this also fit into the like historic signage subcommittee that has been created? I just, I know we have that new ad hoc committee. I'm still trying to understand how that relates to the cultural art districts in downtown. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Are you, are you talking about the Historic Marker Committee? Yes. The Historic Marker Committee is strictly for historic markers and not for murals. So there has been some language delineating between creating something that artistically could reflect historic narratives. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. I don't, I think the mural is not part of a marker. Thanks for clarifying. This is Commissioner Holder. So at this point, Lynn, our options are to make a motion to retain our former approval. Is that, or to um, make a motion to deny the project as, I'm not really sure what we're supposed to do now. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, yes, you can just leave your approval as it stands and not reconsider the application, or you can consider the application with the unpainted material and deny that application so that the applicant can appeal to city commission. Uh, but sorry, Commissioner Arby, Lynn, previously when I asked whether we should discuss the, the option of a mural, you thought, I, I sorry, I might have been misunderstood, but I thought it was important that we discuss that as a commission. Lynn Braddock, Walner, Historic Resources Administrator, I think it was important to have that discussion so that if the applicant wants to paint the surface and not um, appeal the denial to the city commission, then they could also have the option to paint a mural as a painted surface. Mrs. Chair Meyer, I don't have any objection to a mural being painted. 
But re- in terms of the mural, we're just stating what our opinion is. It won't come back to us on that particular issue one way or the other, right? Lynn Braddock's on our Historic Resources Administrator. That is correct. Okay. This is Commissioner Holder. As I understand that our previous motion, since it was generic enough as a painted surface, it encompasses whether he wants to go with a consistent one color or a mural. So we're covered if we retain our original approval. Commissioner Ruby, that's my understanding and that would be my preference would be to retain our original uh, vote. Lynn, uh, this is Commissioner Holder. Lynn, if we are all in favor of retaining our original vote, do we need to actually make a motion or what? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. I think at this point you would wanna ask the applicant if they want you to reconsider that vote um, and vote either looking at the project with the exposed metal, the unpainted metal, um, if that's the project that he chooses to move forward with, then you would need an action on that item. So Lynn, are, they, are you asking me if I want, if we want you HRC to deny it so we can go to city commission, is that? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator, yes. I think that's the conversation the commission needs to have with you. I, had, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think we need to appeal to city commission, but you know, it's just, to me, it's, we're, we're just trying to do something for the community, so. You know, we'll we'll paint it if that's what you guys think is is the right what, right course of action, which it sounds like it is, unless someone's unless I'm missing something. As Chair Meyer, I mean, it it sounds like that's what it is. So, um, I mean, do you, I, I guess, Lynn, do we need to take a vote about that? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. It would probably be good for clarification if you have a motion and um, take a vote on the item. And the motion would be to affirm our prior decision. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. That would be correct. Okay. And do we need to do that twice or can we just do it once? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator, you would need to do it for both items. So separate so, votes? Separate votes. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, I will, I guess, move that we affirm our prior decision regarding DR 20 260. Is there a second? Commissioner, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say in, a, in accordance with the state law review. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Irby, second. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote. This is Chair Meyer again. Commissioner Irby? Aye. Commissioner Holder? Aye. Commissioner Young? Nay. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hawley. Nay. I'm sorry, that was a nay. Correct. I think that was. Okay. Commissioner Meyer is an aye. So that carries four to two. Then I will go ahead and make a motion that we affirm our prior decision. Um, in accordance with the downtown design guidelines. Is there a second? Commissioner Irby, second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. I'll go ahead and take another roll call vote. Commissioner Irby? Aye. Commissioner Holder? Aye. Commissioner Young? 
Nay. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hawley. A nay. And Commissioner Meyer is an aye, so that motion carries four to two. All right, that concludes uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting. I will go ahead and move that we adjourn for the evening, unless there's anything else. Is there anything else, Avery Lynn? Lynn Braddock Solner, Historic Resources Administrator. I don't believe staff has anything else unless a commission member has anything else. All right, any commissioners, anything else? Uh, Commissioner Holly, I, Lynn, this is outside of the scope of the approval, but just a question if the applicant decided to pursue a mural, um, they could paint on the galvanized surface, but I would be curious if they, in consultation with an artist, needed a flatter surface, um, such as on a cement board, as would have, mural near New York Elementary School would have been done, would that require the applicant to um, seek HRC approval? Since it would be a different material change, but it would be painted in the same massing. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, if it were a different material, I think that would bring up a different discussion. Um, if you're talking about just painted panels, then I think that would um, the commission would need to discuss that and direct staff. This is Chair Meyer. Any other comments by commissioners? Um, this is Commissioner Holder, and this will likely be my last meeting on the commission. Um, I am moving out of our jurisdiction. So um, it's been a pleasure, everyone. Oh. Well, we will miss you. That's Good sad luck. to hear. Good luck. Uh, it's Johnson yes, County, luck but I can't be on the commission anymore. <laughs> so going to miss you. I'll still Good work luck. here in town. So I think I saw one of you on a recent webinar. <laughs> okay. Well, are there, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and adjourn for the evening. All right, good night, everyone.